Hey everyone, this is Aaron with GeoWace here for tutorial two on our QGIS in the field series. Today we're going to be covering three different things and the nice thing is we're going to be doing them all simultaneously. So we're going to uh, make a required field. We're going to number two, uh, implement a number slider widget. And number three, we are going to um, show you how to kind of remember previously input values. That way you don't have to put them in every time fresh. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I've got QGIS open right here. We're going to be working out of our plants layer. If you need this uh, data package, just uh, go ahead and look at the video notes. And in this plants layer, we're going to go to properties. Within properties, this entire tutorial, we're going to be working with the attributes form area. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then we are going to hit max height feet. Uh, one requirement of the number widget is that you need to have a number field or integer and then you need a or the other option is basically to have a double field or a decimal so uh, we're gonna go ahead and use an integer field today we're trying to get the maximum height of our plant and we are going to go ahead and throw in maximum height as our alias just a little bit more clear than underscore height feet uh, i guess we can put feet in parentheses and uh, all you need to do to create the number widget is go to editable here and hit slider um, dial is also an option but i don't think that it's supported at least in ios i tried it earlier it didn't work so i've always used a slider uh, this is kind of important you want to make sure that your range uh, closely correlates to the uh, data you're trying to collect. In this case, since I'm going for plant feet, that can be anything from ground cover. So zero up to uh, mature tree height. That could be, I guess, up to 100, uh, up to 400 feet. But we're going to go ahead and put, I think the tallest tree is like 380, but we're going to put 200. We don't have anything that crazy here. I'm in Ohio. so, And then um, I already kind of checked this, but this is how you would make something required. So you would just make sure that your checkbox for not null is checked. And you'd also check that enforce not null constraint is checked as well. If you had this one unchecked, basically it would give a warning saying, hey, this thing shouldn't be empty. But uh, if you actually want people to be forced to create a value, you just have to check that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to hit OK. Just to show you how it looks in QGIS here, we'll go ahead and make a point. You can see now we have a number slider. Um, you have the zero here. If you watch that, it's going to go up or down and all that fun stuff. Now that we have that implemented, this is very important, very important step, very simple, very important step, but you have to save your project that commits it to your drive, and then you need to hit your sync button, which is right here, synchronize current cloud project. And we are going to prefer our computer here, so that's already checked, we're good there, and we're going to perform actions, and we will see you in Q field next. All right, we are all logged into our Q field application. What we're going to go ahead and do now is uh, you, the first thing that you need to do is you can see here that field ops has changes and is available locally. So this is our old version that we did last time. What we're going to do is we are going to remove the stored project. You're long tapping on the project and we're removing the stored project and you can see that you have that down arrow now so we're going to go ahead and click it to re-download it i'm going to pause this until it actually syncs up all right we are all downloaded now and we are synced to our device we're going to click on field ops and if you go to our little edit icon and hit our plants layer you will see a couple things we're going to go ahead and create a new point First thing you'll notice is that you have a big red bar on top instead of a green one. That means that we have a required field. So all you need to do is match the red on red and look at maximum height. That's what we just said a minute ago. And everything went out great. You can see your alias is maximum height in feet. You can see that our uh, field name is, or our alias name is in red, which means that it's required. And you can see a number slider. And as soon as that you populate that, it turns green for you. 
So the last thing that we need to cover today is the checkbox here. What that's going to do is we're just going to pretend like every tree in this place is 63 feet. And we are going to uh, hit our checkbox. You'll see that we have a point added. And the cool thing is now that you have that checkbox for your uh, kind of remember value, you can hit your plus to add another point. And you'll see that it's already populated. Your new feature is already populated with your maximum height. So just something really cool. You can see that you have that option to remember value on everything within this form. And so it really comes in handy when you are in the field and you come across something that there's one kind of field in particular that always seems to have the same value locally. So it's not necessarily worth a default on the full form, but in the current conditions, in the current environment, it's kind of prevalent where or everywhere. So that would be a good instance to use this. But in any scenario, they covered all three required fields, remember value and the slider functionality. So um, if you have any requests for things to see in the future, let me know. At this point, next week, we're going to be doing base maps. So we'll see you next week for base maps. We'll talk to you later. Bye.